All right, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, welcome to today's uh, webinar on uh, wearable communication uh, badges. Um, excited to have you all here. Uh, we're gonna hear about um, how wearable technology can and has helped uh, limit uh, infection during COVID-19, as, as well as uh, helping nurses to uh, communicate uh, effectively. Um, today, we have, in fact, uh, two presentations, uh, which are going to last around uh, 30 minutes. And we've reserved about 15 minutes at the end uh, for, for, for Q&A. Um, questions can be submitted via uh, GoToWebinar. Um, there'll also be an email address that will be provided at, uh, at the end of the, the session. And um, material is also going to be sent out at the end of the session, including a recording of today's uh, webinar, uh, an infection control e-guide, uh, as, as well as a uh, survey. So um, introducing myself first off, uh, I'm Alan Stocker. I uh, manage the Connected Health uh, Business Unit here, here at Wavelink. Uh, we are a uh, provider of communication solutions to, to, to healthcare. Uh, but today, you're not going to be hearing for, from, from much from me. Um, I'm merely moderating the event, but you're going to be hearing from um, from Rhonda Collins, who's the uh, Chief uh, Nursing Officer. Um, she's been at Vasera for, for, for eight years and has uh, an amazing 30 years of uh, nursing experience. And uh, Rhonda will be speaking about uh, supporting healthcare facilities during the pandemic. So good morning, uh, Rhonda, or good evening, I should say, where, where you are. Welcome, welcome to the, welcome to the event. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we're also going to be hearing from Aaron Jones, who's the Chief Nursing and Midwifery Information Officer at uh, Sydney uh, Local Health District. Aaron has uh, six years experience at Sydney LHD. He's also an Associate uh, Professor at the University of Sydney. He's been working in the digital health space for 10 years and, and in addition to that has vast clinical experience. Um, Aaron's clinical background is in intensive care and emergency nursing and, and Aaron's going to be speaking about the uh, responding to the COVID-19 Delta outbreak uh, with uh, the Sarah badges in the ICU. So welcome Aaron, good morning. Good so, morning, uh, thank you Alan. So we'll, we'll get right into it. Uh, Rhonda, I will be handing now over to you to, to start off your presentation. Thank you, Alan. I really appreciate it. Uh, hello from Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you tonight or tomorrow. And uh, thank you for your time and attention. Next slide, please, Alan. Um, during the last two years, we have all really struggled through with um, all of the challenges that have come our way. Even before COVID, all of us in healthcare had faced many risks. We had faced many challenges, um, but certainly this last two years has challenged us like never before. Um, clearly, we have, we are experiencing a, a turnover in nursing, an exodus from the profession that is, um, has never happened in history. There's several things that have come together with the aging of the nursing workforce, the change in the role, and of course, COVID has really exacerbated that. But we find that nurses are saying, I just need solutions. I need, um, I need tools and I need uh, processes that make it easier for me to do my work, to live in this space. We talk about burnout a lot, but I, I would submit to you that burnout is a work-related injury. And so we have to look at the work that delivers the insult. Next slide, please. I have a little bit of a delay on my end. So uh, the American Hospital Association did a, an environmental scan in the US and I did ask if you would be interested in these numbers and I want to share with you. Um, nurse leaders cite, these are the top challenges during the pandemic and I think it will be very similar to what you're experiencing. 
but communicating and implementing changing policies, the constantly changing policies from our regulatory leaders, 55% of them said that was their biggest challenge. Surge staffing, training, and reallocation of uh, staff, 54% said that was a huge challenge. The emotional health and well being of staff, at least 50%. I would say to you in 2022, that number has gone up. Uh, there is no doubt about that. And then access to PPE or other supplies that we need. I think uh, the supply chain issues on that have eased somewhat, but they can still be problematic in certain areas of the world. Next slide. So when we start working with um, you know, clients like Sydney Help and with Alan, we look at how can we help you to address the work environment? Um, it doesn't matter how you staff. If you have primary nursing or you have team nursing or how you manage the nurses across the continuum of your healthcare organizations, effective communication is what drives effective patient care. Uh, it is what drives effective teamwork. It is the very foundation of everything we do. And so when, uh, when we are trying to coordinate communication, um, sometimes disparate instruments, disparate phones, disparate technologies, and just yelling down the hall are not always the best way to communicate. So what we look at and what Aaron's gonna share with you is their experience about implementing a single communication device that is a wearable um, that nurses can use in the moment as they need it. Next slide. The other thing we're focused on is keeping nurses protected and safe, uh, making sure that when they're in the moment of duress, that they have the new tools that they need to call for help effectively. Um, we equip nurses with technology that can be worn under PPE, it can keep the nurse safe from uh, holding devices and instruments to their faces during this time and also helps reduce infection risk. Next slide. The other thing that we've really had to face throughout COVID is um, empowering nurses to manage their schedules or manage the communication between all of the team members and between the families, because frequently families have been separated from their loved ones and it's created really some ethical challenges. And so we believe that we equip nurses with solutions that give them control over that communication, that allows them to reach who they need to reach, when they need to reach them, and allows them to make patient family communication part of their workflows rather than a disruptive factor. Next slide. So I just want to share with you exactly, um, Aaron has implemented part of the Vocera platform, but we, we also have a very powerful integration engine that allows for rules and routing and audit and reporting that can connect the electronic health record, nurse call, um, physiologic monitors, bed management, location systems, pathology. All of the care team can be connected through to an end device of choice. Um, Aaron's Hospital has chosen the hands-free wearable, which I will say uh, hands down is the device of choice in uh, patient care environments, but to enable applications on phones uh, for allied health and medical staff um, allows them to talk to each other it, without, it doesn't matter what your end device is. It's a robust system that the software allows everyone to use a device of choice to have the same benefits and features that uh, you'll see in just a moment. Next slide. And then uh, finally, I just wanted to demonstrate the one touch panic button. It's a red button on the side of the wearable that um, anyone, clinicians or staff in the hospital can press the button and it will alert staff, security staff to respond to a location um, where we can reduce uh, response to duress calls from minutes to seconds. Um, this product was designed by nurses for nurses. We actually took it into some of our hospitals in the US and said, if there's one thing we can do, what would that be? And they said, have a dedicated panic button. So when we need help, we can call. Next slide. So having said that, just to give you an overview of the Vocera platform. So when Aaron starts talking, you really know what he's talking about and uh, you can picture the utilization within their hospitals. 
I will turn it over to you, Aaron. Thank you. Hi, and um, b before I just hand over to, to Aaron, I'm just going to share a uh, video uh, highlighting the uh, experience of Sydney LHD for, for everybody to watch. We were hearing from clinicians who were working in ICU that they were having challenges with communication, particularly in those areas where the staff had to wear full PPE. So what we thought as part of our COVID-19 pandemic response was to actually look at a communication solution where staff could actually call the relevant person in a timely manner, which is why we decided to look at Vicera badges to see whether or not that would actually make a difference. Our mission at Sydney Local Health District is excellence in healthcare and healthcare for all. And technology like this one, these Vasura badges, really help our clinicians really enable us to deliver that mission. These hands-free wearables, they free up clinicians to do other things. They make their day more efficient. Uh, it's much more enjoyable for them to use tools that are really suited to the work that they do. And they're able to do what they do best, which is concentrate on patient and family-centered care. As you can see here, Vasera. Um, I guess it's almost like a walkie-talkie. We have to train the genie, so there's a genie inside and we have to train her to know our voice. Call um, your colleagues within the unit um, through glass walls. Um, they can call um, their colleagues across the entire floor as well as calling telephone numbers. We also show them how to broadcast messages. They attach the device to the front of their scrubs. This can be then worn there for their entire shift. If they need to don PPE to go into an isolation room or to do a procedure or what have you, they can just pop that PPE over the top of the device. I think communication is always going to be vital, whether it's the COVID patients or general ICU. It's great for observation of patients. We've been able to achieve negative pressure in each of the rooms, which is optimal for caring for COVID patients. The rollout of the Vicera device is a real game changer in the way in which we're going to be able to deliver our uh, effective care to our patients as well as communicate effectively in a much more timely manner. So we went live at Concord Hospital on the 22nd of September and, and as part of the project we wanted to get some good baseline time of motion data together. We found that staff were saving 56 seconds of time to communicate with each other. So in the baseline data it was taking on average 71 seconds for staff to communicate and that was brought right down to 15 seconds after we implemented the badge. The Vicera badge is saving us 56 seconds and seconds save lives, especially in our critical care areas. But really the wearable space is going to get very interesting over the next few years. With new ways of working, we can use new technologies to make things more efficient. But I'm really also excited about the wearables opportunity for patients as well. Pretty soon we'll be able to send patients home from surgery much sooner because we'll be able to monitor them in their own homes. Or we might even be able to prevent you coming into the hospital at all by providing you a wearable so that one of our expert clinicians can monitor you remotely while you're more comfortable in your home or another environment that you prefer. Okay, uh, you should be seeing the uh, screen you. again. Thank you very much for that video, Aaron, and uh, handing over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Rhonda. So it's really um, a pleasure to be talking um, to you all today about our experience with the Vicera badges and what we did in the Delta outbreak. Just really like to acknowledge a few of the team members that have actually helped me put put this together and have also done a lot of work to do the evaluations. So a big call out to Tony and Gemma and I will make more acknowledgements at the end of the presentation. Next slide please, Ellen. But before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm meeting on. I'm at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. Um, I'm on Gadigal land um, and Gadigal land is part of the Eora Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and all Aboriginal people who are with us today. Next slide please, Alan. So 
So just a little bit about Sydney Local Health District, for those of you that don't know us very well. Geographically, we are the smallest local health district in New South Wales. However, we are a large um, and very diverse um, district in terms of population. We stretch from the uh, central business district of Sydney um, and probably go out about 20 kilometres out west. Um, our big hospitals, uh, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital and Concord Hospital, uh, tertiary and quaternary services, burn services, so big, large, busy hospitals. Uh, we have a very large mental health service. Uh, we have uh, Canterbury Hospital um, um, and Balmain Hospital. And of course, we have a very large uh, community health service and drug health service as well. Next slide, please, Ellen. So really, um, I wanted to talk about the why. So why did we do this? Um, th there's some quotes which I'm not going to read out, but I really would like you to spend some time reading those quotes, particularly the one in the middle. But when the Delta wave um, really started impacting our hospital system in Australia in July 2021, uh, we were hearing um, feedback to ICT services from our colleagues in clinical areas, and in particular in intensive care units, where they were getting very critically unwell patients and challenges of wearing PPE um, and um, being um, contained in isolation areas. So not having that contact with their colleagues and the ability to be able to call for help in a timely manner and get the equipment and medications that they really need for their patients. Prior to, I suppose, the Delta outbreak and how I um, became aware of Vicera is multifactorial. Um, Probably about five years ago, I saw Vicera when I was very fortunate enough to go over to the US uh, for a conference and saw it in action. And I really could see the benefits from a health um, professional perspective, um, but most importantly, from a patient perspective, because I could actually see the device being used in such a way as it gave time back to the clinical staff to actually be with patients and provide really good patient care. Probably about a year and a half ago, we also were doing some work with eHealth New South Wales um, to look at communication solutions for isolation rooms. And Vizera was one of the de devices that we actually tested with the challenges of um, being able to communicate in and out of isolation rooms. And that was really quite successful. Um, so when the Delta outbreak hit, um, we immediately thought of Vicera as a really great solution um, to assist us with the communication challenges. And I'll go into those challenges in a bit more in the presentation. Um, the, well, one of the benefits which um, Rhonda um, um, alluded to and, and you also saw in the video is that this badge can be worn seamlessly under PPE. Um, and it actually um, has meant that many staff um, don't need mobile devices anymore. Um, or that pager, which actually does distract away from clinical work. Next slide, please, Ellen. So what we did with the project, um, and clearly one of the challenges with the pandemic, um, is that we had to do a lot of our training very differently to what we would for a normal health tech go live. Uh, normally we work very closely with the vendor on site. Uh, the vendor, particularly when you're implementing a, a new technology for the first time is what, what I would consider our subject matter experts. But of course, uh, we had to work very closely with the Vicera team to think outside the square. Um, so what we managed to do is actually do a lot of the support virtually. Um, Vicera were, were really great with us um, and held our hand on multiple Microsoft Teams um, to um, transfer, transfer all of their information over to us um, in a really great way. So we started the initial planning in the middle of August. Um, we we then did um, a, a lot of the core workflows and at that particular stage so that we could really identify how we were going to use the Vicera badges in real life. Uh, we then, in the middle of September, did just-in-time training for our health informatics um, staff uh, because we were the super users um, and the train the trainers. Um, at, at around that time, we really wanted to make sure that we evaluated the implementation really well. So we started on our pre-implementation data collection, which I'll go through in a bit more detail uh, further in the presentation. 
uh, like uh, the video mentioned, we went live in Concord ICU. Um, and then on the 12th of October, um, we went live in Royal Prince Alfred in the COVID um, ICUs. And soon after that, we went in the non-COVID areas uh, and really wrapped up the project in the middle of November. Um, so as you can see, the timeline was pretty tight. Um, and, but we managed to really get it successfully implemented across our intensive care units um, really well. Next slide, please, Ellen. Preparing staff. Um, I think COVID has taught us that there are so many different ways to be able to train staff and how to use technology. Um, I think all of us that are working in this field have got so used to virtual training sessions now that it's become second nature to us. But clearly with technology like um, Vicera, we needed to have some face-to-face -face time. Um, all of our staff in health informatics were fit tested, PPE trained, and we actually invested the time to go into the um, ICUs to get them to be trained up um, to use the Vicera badges with the Genie. Um, and to demonstrate and practice some of the basic core functions in real times. Um, as you can see, we created a lot of accounts during that time um, and um, really um, ensured that all of the staff were training the genie um, before we went live. Next slide, please, Ellen. The um, evaluation methodology that we used um, was to do time and motion studies. We thought it was really important for us to get good baseline measures around the different modes of communication that the staff were using before we put the technology in, um, and then would go back and measure it after the Vicero badges went in. Uh, we developed a survey, and then post-implementation, um, we followed up with staff with time and motion studies, surveys, but all also focus groups, just to really drill into some more detail. And of course, the Vicera Analytics, uh, which is um, absolutely amazing uh, with the data that we can pull from the system. Next, next slide, please, Ellen. So the time and motion studies, and this is for Concord Hospital, and I will um, talk to this in a bit more detail because I appreciate it can look a bit busy. Um, as you can see, um, before we implemented, there was a variety of different ways that staff were trying to communicate when they were in PPE and caring for a patient who was critically unwell with COVID. Uh, the predominant ways of communicating was uh, staff members waving through glass to get uh, another staff member's attention, usually when they were walking past the window. Uh, the other way um, was knocking on the glass. So if the staff member didn't respond to the wave, they would do a knock. Um, there was um, a little bit of um, yelling through the glass as well to try and get attention, um, uh, pointing, thumbs up, and all sorts of other ways of, of communicating. So clearly not efficient. Um, and some of the challenges I think that we saw um, with that was the miscommunication. Um, because the staff were wearing N95 masks, they were wearing goggles, and trying to get communication through a window, um, we saw staff actually reverting to writing on pieces of paper um, and placing it on the window so, so that the staff could actually see all of the equipment that they needed in the isolation room. As you can see, when we uh, went live, um, the vocera became the predominant mechanism of communication. Um, the knocking on glass and the waving through glass was still there, but it was more of an opportunistic um, um, approach if they saw a particular staff member that they needed to talk to at that particular time. Next slide, please, um, Ellen. This, uh, this slide really excites me. Um, and this is the uh, time and motion study that we looked um, around the uh, communication delays um, before and after we implemented um, Vicera. So we saw a significant reduction in delays in communication when we went live. Uh, we saw roughly a 36 to 47 percent improvement in commu communication delays. Um, and we quantified as waiting longer than 15 seconds for a response to call for assistance as a delay. Um, the project team felt 
uh, that waiting for longer than 50 se 15 seconds was a long time, particularly when you're near a critically unwell patient in an intensive care unit, um, and particularly if they need urgent equipment or medication for their patient, or in fact, to, um, you know, communicate with the team if there's um, some deterioration occurring. So this really did translate into a significant amount of time um, saved. And I'll go into more details on the next slide, please, Ellen. So this really paints a picture about our intensive care units at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. So we uh, went live at Concord Hospital. They had two intensive care units. Normally, they had one permanent intensive care unit. Uh, in the Delta outbreak, they had to open a temporary um, ICU. At Concord Hospital, they don't do ECMO. At Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, normally they have four permanent intensive care units, um, but with the COVID, with the um, Delta outbreak, they um, created um, a temporary um, ICU, so five in total, um, and they care for patients on ECMO. I think the one thing from, from this um, slide is that we saw significant efficiency gains for all groups of staff related to communication. Um, interestingly enough, this morning when I came into work, I bumped into uh, one of my colleagues who still works in the intensive care unit, um, and their comment was um, around the time saved for auxiliary staff, so our ward assistants, our porters, and our clerks, and being able to communicate to the right person at the right time um, around equipment, around whether or not they need to prone a patient really quickly. Um, for our clerks who are trying to coordinate visitor calls or somebody um, needs to go and see them, um, rather than doing running the gauntlet of phone calls around the intensive care unit, they're actually able to use the badge and get to the right person immediately, um, rather than trying to find the person. And that has saved significant times, especially for a complex, large intensive care unit like the one at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. Next slide, please. This um, slide also, I mean, all of our slides excite me about um, the, the changes that we've seen. Um, but this is this um, graph is really looking at how easy communication was pre and post Viscera. So pre is in the um, yellow and post is in the green. And as you can see, we saw we saw statistically significant improvements in um, um, in the perception of easy and very easy in nursing, uh, team medical, allied health, um, and during an emergency situation and the emergency situations where the viscera badges were being used really well were in patients who had deteriorated rapidly and required um, intubation. Um, we didn't see a lot of improvement um, as you can see there in contacting staff outside of the intensive care unit um, and part of the next step and stage of this project is to be working with um, Vicera um, and our health informatics teams and our staff intensive in our intensive care units to really optimize the system and to put on um, some of the more functionality that we have. So uh, watch the space on that. Next slide, please, Ellen. So the focus groups uh, we did um, was after we resurveyed the staff um, after we went live because we really wanted to drill in um, into some of the themes. Um, my favourite quote from the entire project is right in the middle, uh, where one of the registered nurses in, um, in an ICU said that she's sure it saved some people. And when I say save some people, I'm, I'm not only talking about um, patients, but I'm also talking about um, the support um, for the clinical staff who are caring for really unwell patients. Um, and, um, you know, they were really clear that it has been a game changer for patients and for the clinical staff in the ICU. Clearly, uh, we've seen um, significant savings in time and efficiency of staff. Uh, we've seen improved patient safety. Um, our staff are able to spend more time at the bedside and are able to prepare for clinical activities better. One of the things and one of the roles that emerged in our uh, intensive care units was the role of the runner, where if staff required um, equipment, the runner would be um, 
tasked on Microsoft Teams um, at Royal Prince Alfred um, with a list of um, equipment to get, and they would run and get that equipment. Um, they couldn't run with a computer to see if, oh, whoops, I also needed a X, Y, and Z. Uh, with the Vicera badge, um, it's really easy now that the staff can go, oh, and while you're down there, can you pick up another X, Y, or Z? Um, so that's been a real game changer for the, for the staff uh, as well. Um, supporting staff has been, a, a, I think, a key win for us. Not only existing staff, but we've also seen staff uh, redeployed um, into our intensive care units. And they do require um, a little bit of hand-holding, but to know that there's other people around where they can press a button and get help really quickly. And like I said, we will be optimising the system in the future. Next slide, please, Ellen. So, in conclusion, uh, the Vicera badge did resolve a lot of the challenges faced. We wanted a solution in particular that met the infection control requirements that we had um, and can be worn under PPE and used really uh, effectively and it ticked all of those boxes. Um, clearly it needed to be easy to use. Um, you know, the cognitive burden on our staff who are working in COVID areas because they're having to do a lot of new activities and um, there's some stuff that, that have been redeployed. So for us, um, a device that was easy to use and, and to learn really quickly was super important. Um, and it, it allows staff to stay at the patient bedside, which is where they need to be. Uh, we saw significant improvements in communication between staff and we've had really positive feedback from the staff on project implementation. We actually have gone live in one of our emergency departments last week, and we will be going live in our emergency department at Royal Prince Alfred, hopefully at the end of next week, where we will um, see uh, further improvements in staff satisfaction and better patient care. Next slide, please, Alan. There are so many staff to thank. Um, that I would have needed about 20 slides, um, but really would like to call out the Vicera and the Voigt, uh, Voigt team. Um, I, I remember the initial call that I made to them to say that I wanted to put Vicera into the intensive care unit and I wanted to do it in four weeks. Um, they came to the party. They were incredibly supportive for a big thank you. Our ICT services in Sydney Local Health District um, right the way from our Chief Information Officer to our infrastructure team, our service delivery team, all the way through to um, um, our um, Director of Strategy, Architecture, Innovation and Research. Our health informatics staff who were on the ground providing all of the training, um, really engaged the staff, have been the face of Vicera for us. I'd like to really thank them. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank our um, ICU staff um, at Concord, RPA, the executive staff that have supported it. So thank you everybody for all of the work that you've done on this project. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you uh, very much indeed. Uh, really informative uh, presentations there. I'm gonna stop uh, sharing the screen and we, we do have a few questions that have uh, come in through, throughout the session. So. I'm going to kick off with some with some questions. So, first question for you, uh, Aaron: um, Are you in investing uh, the uh, FTE time gained in patient care uh, so the missed care is completed? Yeah. So when we look at efficiency um, saving um, for FTE, it's around giving time back to those staff to patient care activities or to other activities that are on the unit. It's not really around um, moving staff around. So what we are seeing is that the staff are, are, are staying donned and doffed and with their patient. I think what I didn't really um, highlight is that, and, and something that we would like to go back and measure, and for those of you that are considering Vocera for your COVID response is to, um, do a time emotion study and look at how many times the staff were donning and doffing PPE. Uh, we've seen a significant reduction in the times that, that staff do need to take their PPE on and off, which adds to those efficiency savings, which means that 
you know, the clinical staff are able to stay with the patients providing care. Thank you. And uh, another question for you here, uh, Aaron. I'm sure, sure where they're, they're rolling in, but um, how did you get funding for the uh, for the project? Uh, so we um, got funding um, for for the project um, through um, our, our COVID response. Um, so so we secured funding um, th through yeah through our COVID response. Okay. Uh, and a question for for you, Rhonda. D does the uh, does the call system have duress duress alarms, recording or links to calling codes? Um, I'm going to make the assumption you're talking about code blue and things like that. The duress button does not, but we create, that is a dedicated duress button for workplace violence. Um, there are call holes or call lists that, that the nurse can utilize, like call the stroke team or call the code team, and it will notify instantly anyone on that team. Uh, you don't have to run to a phone. You don't have to look up numbers or start a call tree or anything like that. You can just create um, roll calling where if I, Rhonda, show up and every time I show up, I'm on the stroke team. When I log into Vocera, then I'm going to get a notification that uh, a stroke code has been called. Um, so that's how it works. You just define the software and how you want to do that. And our our clinical executives are work very closely with Aaron. I think uh, he would agree with that to help create and suggest and um, work through with our, our customers so you understand exactly the breadth of what you can do to create these uh, role calling or group calling or broadcast calling to get the help that you need uh, really instantly. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and Rhonda, uh, I can add to that. We have. Um, We've used the broadcast functionality to be able to um, use that when we need to call for help for whatever emergency situation we have really well. It's it's a wonderful feature, absolutely. Uh, I had another question here. Uh, will the presentation be available post the session? Absolutely. Uh, we'll be sending out uh, as part of the uh, as part of the the content. So, you received that. Um, another question for 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 Rhonda. Um, what are the primary communication challenges that you're seeing uh, with your work with the uh, nurse uh, leaders, and how has the how has the uh, pandemic impacted nurses? Uh, tremendously is is the fast and quick answer, but. Um, you know, a lot of the work and a lot of the publications and speaking I do is around cognitive burden. And Aaron, you mentioned the, the impact of cognitive load on nurses at the bedside. Well, as, as staffing changes, um, you know, we're, we're talking about things that were uh, becoming obsolete when I went into nursing, which you can take one look at me and know that was a long time ago. But we're looking at team nursing with nurse extenders because um, the staffing shortages and so when I work with nurse leaders, we look at how can the technology fill the gaps or how can the technology uh, shore up and extend the nurse's reach so the nurse doesn't have to leave the bedside, the nurse doesn't have to take extra steps, the nurse doesn't have to look for things. They're able to just, uh, with a simple call, be able to get what they need, whether it's people or process or protocol even, or technology or equipment. Um, so I think that that's one of the big challenges we have when we start to look at nursing and, and the issues that we have right now is that we're going to have to take care of more people with fewer nurses. That is a fact and it's not a pleasant one and it's not one that we're all comfortable with. But what we have to do now is look at where can technology fill in the gap? Where can technology step up and deliver the information that nurses need in the moment that they need? It. So we can ensure that our patients are cared for safely and that our nurses don't experience that, that cognitive load that can lead to burnout and um, really frustration uh, with their jobs and wanting to leave the profession. Thank you. 
Um, Aaron, um, what prompted you to uh, reevaluate your communication systems and uh, specifically adopt Vercera as a communication platform? And, and the, and the follow-up question was as well, uh, was, the was the pandemic the, the sole driver here? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. And um, the, the, the challenges with um, infection control and PPE um, with older communication technology, particularly mobile phones, where it requires you to touch a device. Um, our stuff with gloves as well, uh, pages um, as well that are, um, are worn on a uniform, not on PPE, but it provides you just with the one-way communication. Um, it really didn't um, meet the requirements of the staff that were in PPE, caring for really unwell patients and being isolated. Uh, like I said, there was a, a design sprint um, probably a year and a half ago where we were looking at challenges of caring for um, patients who have been isolated for similar reasons in relation to, um, you know, trying to get drug checks or equipment into rooms when staff are already um, donned with PPE um, and the inability to take traditional um, IT technology into those rooms and being able to clean them effectively. For us, the badge is safely worn under PPE, can be cleaned, um, and that, that for us, that, that's what we were looking for. Excellent. And, and another question for you, uh, Aaron, is around the ICT uh, infrastructure. So what sort of infrastructure was uh, required and uh, were you able to use uh, LHD ICT infrastructure to use this system? Uh, yeah, so there was, um, we, we used existing uh, infrastructure, so Wi-Fi access ports um, around um, our hospitals have been just slightly tweaked to be able to use the Vasera badges, so you don't actually need to be um, putting in a lot of infrastructure, it just requires um, quite a bit of checking to make sure that the signals are okay, which was fine for us. Um, there was a little bit of behind the scenes server work and I'm, I'm a clinician, I'm not a technician, um, but, um, but, but there was a little bit of work to do with the server team um, as well. Okay. And uh, another question here for, for Rhonda, does the system have a, an audit function and link to any documentation? We do not currently, uh, well, what Aaron has does not link to documentation, but we do have um, a software program that we call Vocera Edge that can link to documentation um, no matter what your EHR is, um, that we can push and pull information through the clinical app. Uh, that, of course, functions on a smartphone. But um, the great thing about the Vocera platform is we can solve the most urgent need that Aaron has uh, told you about tonight. We just really are today, this morning, where you are, uh, told you about that really has solved the problem of communication, communicating under PPE, communicating in isolation. But then you can continue to grow the platform. Uh, the middleware can power uh, the communication between the other services, uh, can create a documentation form on the go, whatever you need to um, to create. Uh, you know, basically it's customizable for the, your hospital, for your needs, uh, for your nursing staff, um, whatever you need, we can certainly support that. And I think we've, we've, we've got, probably got time for, for one last question before we have to uh, wrap up. Um, any um, any questions that we haven't been able to answer, we'll, we will respond uh, d directly to you with the with the answers. But the the last one I will pose to you, um, Aaron, which is: Have you measured the savings on uh, PPE if uh, staff are, uh, are not done and doffing as 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 often as, as before? Yeah, we wanted to do that. We started um, to work out how we could measure that. Um, and for a variety of different reasons, um, we we couldn't do that. And I think um, if if there was a site um, considering putting Vercera in, that's certainly something to do. But, but we had a few challenges um, to be able to measure that. I'm hoping that maybe um, 
um, we can start looking at that again, but it would have been good to measure that. Okay. Anecdotally, with our time and motion studies though, pre and post, we saw the fact that um, we saw some decrease in donning and doffing. Excellent. Well, I'd, I'd not only like to thank uh, our, our attendees, but really Aaron and Rhonda, absolutely fantastic uh, presentations. The the number of questions that we've had flying through speaks volumes to to, to what you've uh, shown, and and you know, really appreciate the the work that you guys have been doing on 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 the front line. So, thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Stay safe. Stay well, and. Uh, We'll see you all next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.